I am appearing by divine special appearance today. This court is a private for-profit for corporation operating under international exchange. I am a living, free, soulful man on the land. I am not the vessel or the all caps name under the maritime admiralty law. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> We're on the record in the case of State of Nevada versus Roger Eugene Hillegas, that's the A case, and Stuart Evans Hanty, that's the B case, case number CR 19 1535 a and CR19-1535B. I'm Judge Breslow, presiding from Washoe County. The court recognizes Mr. Stege on behalf of State of Nevada, Mr. Pataro, uh, who has been hired to be counsel uh, for Mr. Hanty, has not yet uh, been relieved of that responsibility. The court acknowledges Mr. Hanty up in the Washoe County Jail. Good morning, Mr. Hanty. If, if you can hear me, if you'd please stand up, sir, and get closer to the uh, I camera. Stand, I am disabled in a wheelchair. Oh, I'm, I didn't know that. Okay, uh, Deputy, are you able are you able to wheel Mr. Hanty closer to the uh, computer? I, I yes, Judge. He'll, uh, he'll be able to speak normally, and you should be able to hear him. If and you, can, you, you can see him on camera as well. Judge, if you want to ask me any questions while I'm in a wheelchair, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. All right, thank you. Um, let's. Uh, the court also acknowledges um, Ms. Brown from the Division of Parole and Probation, Mr. Meredith from Pretrial Services. Um, he's joining us at the court's request. Um, has anyone heard from Mr. Hillegas uh, with respect to any difficulties he's having joining the hearing today? Mr. Gaynor. Your Honor, I do have an attendee named as well. Actually, I'm sorry, Your Honor, he just appeared and the hand was raised with his name. Okay, very good. Please Thank bring you. him into the hearing. All right, Mr. Hillegas. Um, good morning. Can you hear the court? Yes, I can. All right. So, Mr. Hill, yes, let, let's talk protocol before we start substantively. I want to make sure that you received, reviewed, and are prepared to follow the court's decorum order that was filed in this case. The date it was filed is January 14th, 2022, among other things. It says you must join uh, court with a neutral background and also not on a, a telephone or a smartphone. It has to be on a computer. If you don't have one, it needs to be uh, from the courthouse. Have you received that order and did you read it? Um, I'm not, I have not received that and no, I have not read that, but I do have a computer, but for some reason the computer would not allow me to access the meeting so I am appearing this other through the um, smartphone. Well, are you, you're signed up on eFlex, you're getting, you're filing things and you're getting other orders and filings from parties. Is that right, Mr. Hilligus? I am receiving information, that's correct. And you're telling the court that you did not receive uh, the order regarding protocol for virtual hearings uh, filed on or about January 14th? That's correct. I'm looking in the file. I see we filed it in Mr. Hanty's case. Ms. DeGainer, was that filed in Mr. Hilligus's case also? And if so, on what date? I'm pulling that case right Uh, and your honor, I don't show that filed in the A case. Okay, well, that explains it. That's why Mr. Hilligus didn't get it. So, Mr. Hilligus, the court's willing to overlook that for purposes of today because you didn't get the order. So, for some reason, we overlooked it. That's on the court for not filing it. But we will file a, a copy of the protocol order, the decorum order in your case uh, after this hearing. Please read it and follow it. The essential pieces are neutral background, um, joined from a computer. Uh, indoors. If you don't have a computer, come to the law library in the courthouse. We'll set you up. Um, you know, the court does have uh, proudly the United States flag and the uh, state flag of Nevada behind it. But when we have Zoom hearings um, I, and the prosecutor has the state of Nevada flag and you have the United States flag 
so you know we're good to go but going forward make sure you're on a, a different um a computer inside a neutral background please other than a united states flag all right uh we're here status hearing the case has been uh, unstayed in mr hillegas's case and in mr hanty's case uh, i want to know what's going on um as everyone recalls the court issued an order granting in part denying in part the motion brought by the state to change a Mr. Hanty status. And the takeaway was three things the court ordered. One, a GPS tracking device. I gave the defendant, Mr. Hanty, three or four days to stand that up on account of the holiday weekend. Number two, stay at least 300 feet away from you know, witnesses uh, or officer, judicial officers or um, uh, professional participants in this case. Um, and three, to recertify that he didn't have any firearms. Uh, frankly, I thought that was uh, quite a, um, a good result for Mr. Hanty. It was, I didn't revoke him. I didn't uh, order a psychological evaluation. Uh, I didn't um, respond as vigorously as the state had argued the court ought to in, that, in the circumstances. And really, if Mr. Hanty had gotten the um, GPS device and uh, recertified and stayed away from people he shouldn't be around, We'd be we'd be rocking, but unfortunately, that's that's not what happened. The court learned later that Mr. Handy had not done that. Uh, unfortunately, revoked his um, uh, status, hundred thousand dollar cash bail, plus all the other conditions. Also, it was concerning to the court that the court later learned that he was apprehended, I think, in Elko County. <laughs> so, correct. I, I have I have quite a few questions as a result of that piece alone, um, because. Once Mr. Hanty, you know, we, we move forward on his case, the question is, do we set it uh, for the uh, hearing to determine if he will be able to represent himself uh, or do his actions um, uh, justify the court taking another look at its prior order, granting in part and denying in part the motion? So let me start with you, please, Mr. Pataro. Uh, are you able to share with us if Mr. Hanty has picked up any new charges by virtue of his recent um, apprehension and being brought back to the Washington County Jail. Uh, Your Honor, I have been uh, not notified of uh, any new charges, and I would assume that I would have been notified of that uh, uh, some, somehow, either through official means, through pretrial, or through Mr. Hanty, or just others. So I don't be, I don't believe he did. I think this is uh, this is uh, nothing. I won't say nothing more, but but it is restricted to not getting the bracelet. There was not any collateral uh, issues out there, Your Honor, that uh, I think had an effect on this. All right, and then also I'm assuming I'm right that he was apprehended in Elko County. I'm not sure he had permission to leave Washoe County, but yeah. that's for for Mr. Meredith or somebody else to answer. So the question is then, what, what do we do next? Do we set it for uh, a hearing um, to determine whether um, Mr. Hanty is in a position to represent himself? Does the, does the state want the court to take another look on whether a psychological evaluation should be ordered at this time? Um, is, is Mr. Hanty have a, a medical or health condition that uh, has resulted recently that requires him to be in a wheelchair and not in a position to go forward? Uh, I'm here to discuss those things plus uh, other other matters. I know we have pending, um, unless something has changed, uh, the following. On Mr. Hillegas's case, um, I've got, of course, you know, the we've already canceled the hearing on, on, that was to be set uh, with respect to uh, our Nevada judges seeking to intervene for the limited purpose of being allowed to uh, video uh, from live from the courtroom. There are no courtroom hearings currently set. So we'll take that issue up here in due course. Uh, there had been a request made to video these hearings uh, remotely, which the court has granted in the past and did so for today. There's also a petition for writ of habeas corpus that the, in Mr. Hillegas's case, um, the court needs to rule on. Uh, there's also by the state a motion to strike uh, two pleadings that Mr. Hillegas has recently filed. And Mr. Hillegas has objected to that and, and, and seeking uh, more time uh, in order to, I think, supplement uh, positions with respect to the writ of habeas corpus. Um, the motion to recusal, to, to disqualify has been ruled on. That's why I unstayed this case. 
Um, with respect to Mr. Hanty's case, we have the writ of habeas corpus. Um, again, we have the issue of whether proceedings can be uh, videoed right live from the courtroom. Um, we have a gag order request by the state. We have a motion to suppress or dismiss. And then I don't know the state's position on whether under the circumstances they're seeking to renew or bring anew any uh, request with respect to Mr. Hanty's uh, uh, custody status. So let me turn to Mr. Stege, uh, followed by Mr. Pitaro, followed by Mr. Hillegas, and to see where people stand on what the court is tasked to do right now. Mr. Stege, what do you think the answer to that question is, please? I uh, suggest that the most pressing issue for, for the court uh, would be the uh, matter of representation for Mr. Hanty. I mean, that was the main outstanding um, thing in, in the state's view. Um, and from there, I would then, uh, if, if I was advising the court, uh, we would flow into determine, into deciding the outstanding motions as to both uh, defendants. On the question of what should be done with Mr. Hanty, I think um, any for anything further on him ought to be um, considered by a way of motion. Um, you know, in the state's view, we had the hearing, the court issued the order, he did not comply with it in the court or that he um, be arrested. Uh, and if he wants to get out, he pays $100,000 cash bail. I, I, um, you know, the court doesn't know a whole lot about sort of what transpired between those two, uh, the issuance of the order and Mr. Hanty's arrest. The state is privy to um, a bit more of it, but suffice to say, I think- I, I, let, me, let me just confirm that. I don't know anything. Right. All I know is that he was, A, he didn't comply with the court order, and B, he was picked up, I think, in Elko County. Yes. And, you know, I know he has an estranged wife in, I believe, North Carolina, so it was of concern to the court that it appears he was heading in that direction, and hey, of course, no, concerning no, that he that he um, was not compliant with the court's order, and I was not heading to North Carolina, Judge. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but, I, I'll I'll be more than happy to explain to you. Your Honor, okay. if I, I, can I, Ms. Stewart, please let the judge is going to give us time okay. to talk. Thank you. Know that don't don't interrupt. It's going to cause uh, I, I think additional problems. We're all going to have to sit here and. Listen to things we may like or not like, but we're all going to get a chance to talk. So uh, you're going to, and I'm going to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Batar. Thank you, Mr. Hanty. And and so I, I want to confirm what Mr. Stegi said. <laughs> I, I, I don't know virtually anything other than there, there wasn't the GPS recertification of firearms, and I heard he'd been picked up in Elko County. The other thing is, to clarify what Mr. Stegi said, you know, if, if Mr. Hanty is in a position to be released on, on cash bail. It's, it, he, he has to get the GPS. He has to recertify, he has no firearms. I, I want him out of jail. I want Mr. Hanty out if he will comply with the court order. And you know if he's well enough, I'm, I'm sorry he has a health or, or um, medical issue going on and we can, we can talk about that too. But I, you know, I, it didn't give me any pleasure to revoke his um, bail. I just want him to comply with the court order, move this case along. All right, so Mr. Stege, I interrupted you. So first order of business is decide if Mr. Hanty will continue to be represented by Mr. Bataro or somebody else, or will he be representing himself? And from there, we can move toward um, determination of these other pretrial motions and then see where that leaves us. Is that fair, Mr. Stege? Yes, and on the bail, I think if the court were to hear more, I think the court would, would not say that you want Mr. Hanty to be released. But but the point I want to make now is not to argue about what transpired, but that if uh, the question of Mr. Hanty's release is going to uh, come up, that we have a, a separate hearing on that. I think it would be proper to, uh, to for the court to hear evidence uh, on it. And, and if that were the case, I would ask urge the court to add some of the conditions that the court had previously rejected, so. All right, and let me, and let, before I hear from Mr. Bataro and then Mr. Hilligas, let me just clarify. All I wanted Mr. Hanty to do was to comply with the order. I did not take any pleasure, personal or professional, in issuing an order to revoke his pretrial release. 
that was never the court's intention. I hoped he complied, oh. I gave him time. So believe me, that, that was concerning and unfortunate, uh, but all things being considered, I wish that it hadn't come to that, but here we are. Mr. Bataro, your, your thoughts, please, on anything the court has said, anything Mr. Stegge has said, or anything you'd like to apprise the court of? Uh, uh, yes, John. I, uh, the way I, I, I view why we're here today and, and where I think we should go forward, not all that happens when a bench warrant is issued. The court issues a, a bench warrant many times without bail, many times with a very high bail. Now, the purpose of that really is just to get the person is to get the person back in front of the court. The issue of the hundred thousand dollars was not, I did not I believe, a a, uh, a a number that the court sat and, and dealt with. I, it, I think it was just it was the normal way we do bench warrants. In my fifty years of practicing law, you don't show up. The judges is bench warrant with awful high bail line and to get you back because you ain't going to get out till you get back. And so I, I really think that's where we're at. So the issue of where the bail is going to be is something I think that, that we do have to uh, uh, address. Now, uh, where I differ with uh, Amos is that uh, obviously the custodial status of Mr. Hanty would have a profound effect on whether or uh, not he still wants to uh, fire me and have it during the Ferretti hearing because it's as the court knows, it's difficult enough for the defense attorney who is out of custody, representing an custody client, it's much more difficult to uh, affect that representation. Uh, if you have now a person who is representing himself who is in custody, uh, I mean, the roadblocks uh, that would be set up, I think it would be insurmountable by virtue of the fact that the, the custodial status and those other things are totally independent of uh, him, him representing himself. I mean, those are those are penal interests, those are you know, police interests. So they're different. So I, I think that we have to readdress the, the, uh, uh, the issue of bail. Uh, and I'll come back to that if I just could in a minute. Uh, as, far as, as far as what happened, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if there was anything, but I was first made aware of this, uh, I believe when the uh, pretrial uh, sent a, a message or, or issued to the court. I got a copy of that. Um, and that's when I became aware that a bench warrant had been issued. And then shortly after that, the court had issued the formal warrant with the 100,000, et cetera. Um, and uh, so I've had no contact with uh, Mr. Hanty uh, uh, since then. I was not aware of where he was quite true. I heard Elko, but uh, that's sort of where, where we're at. So I do think the bail issue it does have a profound effect upon the representation issue. Now, let me just jump to, to, to the thing. I don't know if Stuart wants to fire me or not. If Stuart wants to fire me, I, I, I understand uh, his, uh, his nature and I understand the things he does and uh, quite truly some of the stupid things he does uh, that, that, that create problems. So if Stuart wants to go forward with the Ferretti hearing, uh, then that, that's that's fine with me. Uh, I've heard nothing back that the bar took any action based upon the uh, the two letters that he, he uh, wrote to the bar. I, my understanding is, I think he wrote to the bar and said, oh, you guys get all mixed up. I wasn't really talking about Pataro. I was talking about other 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 people. So as, as far as the Ferretti hearing, I, I think maybe we ought to address, does he or doesn't he want me to continue representing him with the understanding you know, and I'd like to put this clearly on the record. Um, I practiced law a lot of years, and I don't mean disrespectful. I am not intimidated by judges. I'm not intimidated by police officers. I'm not intimidated by prosecutors. We all have a certain function in there, and we operate within those functions, and, and that's how we do it. But I'm obligated to... Uh, I'm obligated as an attorney to operate within the system as it exists, not the way I might want or you want or anyone else wants it. And those canons of ethics say what I, I can and can't do. And I will represent him based upon that. I will not file motions that I do not believe are, 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 are moving the case forward positively. There will be disputes. I know that I told him that. Uh, I'll discuss them with you, but you don't make the decision if I 
file a motion or not. If that is going to be a condition of, of any continued representation, then I do not want to represent them. Um, so I think the court cannot can understand that. Uh, the client has ideas of what we can or can't do, and quite truly, most of the time they're wrong. And in this case, it I I I, I think it is. I I've never had in 50 years a, 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 any complaint on ethics, anything of that nature. Uh, and I think I'll die here if I have one. So I'll continue to represent him if he wants me to, but it's gonna be within those limitations that, that the canon's placed upon, not necessarily limitations, but rules of what I can and can't do and, and what I should and should do. I, I, don't, I don't think they understand your honor and I, and I mean this sincerely, I mean this for Roger, and I mean this for Stuart. I don't think they understand that we also have an obligation to the system. As officers of the court, you know, we talk about that, you know, flippantly, but that's a real thing. We, we have obligations to, pro, to do things within the system uh, uh, that have been set up, and they may be different than what a client wants or, or even uh, what I want. So I, if he wants... He wants to get rid of me, fine. It makes no sense to me. If he wants you to stay on, I, I don't like bailing out of cases in the middle of the fight. It's just my nature, I guess. But I would want the court to know, and I want to open court. It's going to be based on me looking at my obligations to a client uh, and my obligations uh, to the system, if, if you will. And I understand a lot of people don't like that. The attorneys have obligations to the system. Well, you know, we're, we're gunfighters, but you know, you still have to give the other guy a chance to draw. And that's the way the game is played. So I don't know if I'm rambling or gave you any insight, but that's <coughs> that's 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 my feeling. One, I think the bail issue has to be addressed. I don't think the hundred thousand bench water was an addressing of the court of the bail. I think it was to get Mr. Hint back in front of the court so the court could reevaluate uh, what it is. So uh, that's my, my input on what judge. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hilligus. Um, right, right now, the, the questions are procedurally, how should the court handle the different matters? And let me tell you what Mr. Stegi suggests. First thing is whether Mr. Um, Hanty is gonna be representing himself or Mr. Bataro, or maybe somebody else. And you heard Mr. Bataro say, yes, but to make an informed decision on that, we really need to address custody status, bail status, which I think Mr. Bataro is telegraphing means that they would be filing a motion to reduce the bail. Um, and then the state would have an opportunity to respond Mr. Pitaro or Mr. Hanty would respond. Then I will decide that. Then we set it for Ferretta hearing if that's what we still, if Mr. Hanty still wants. And that all assumes that Mr. Hanty is, is medically good to go uh, because if he's unwell and he can't understand what's happening or he can't assist him, his lawyer or himself in defending himself, then <coughs> we, have, we have to take care of that. So all that is what we've been talking about, Mr. Hilligus, procedurally, not really the merits of who did what, what the state can prove, whether the case should be here or another court. But what would you like the court to know, Mr. Hilligus, based on what you've just heard, please? I appreciate the opportunity at this status hearing today to express and represent my status and my standing. And with that being said, I am appearing by divine special appearance today. I do reserve all of my federal rights. I am appearing peacefully. I do have a, a peace flag and I do have a Bible present. I am sui juris and I would like to cite the supremacy clause, article six, section two, that our constitution is the supreme law of the land. I'd like to call for a court of record and I'd like to require an article three court um, I'd like to object and challenge the court's jurisdiction because this court is an administrative court. There is no probable cause and there is no victim. This court is operating through an administrative proceeding. They are operating under the executive branch, not the judicial branch. This court is a private for-profit for 
corporation operating under international exchange. You collect a corporate paycheck. The private corporation operates with a Dun and Bradstreet number. And I have been in communication with representatives from Dun and Bradstreet, and I have obtained the Dun's number for the for-profit corporation. So far, I have number 790990, and I will leave the last three numbers out. And the other Dun and Bradstreet number I have is 363822. And once again, I will leave the last three numbers out. Um, this court is operating under the doctrine of parents patre. Um, the state is not my parent. I am a living, free, soulful man on the land. I am not the vessel or the all caps name under the maritime admiralty law, which is a civil law, which is commerce. It's not criminal. In fact, on December 15, 2021, Chief Justice Clarence Thomas has proclaimed that maritime admiralty law is no longer recognized. Therefore, my status and standing, I am standing on my God-given natural law rights. This court operates under codes and statutes. It is not criminal, it operates under commerce. So with that being said, I am going to issue an oral NRS 239 public records request that the court required that they are provide me with your oath of your office, your signed wet ink certified oath and your surety bond that you are sworn an oath to uphold the constitution of the United States and of the state of Nevada. I am not to be considered a person, resident, or citizen. I do require and demand a Title III court. As I am an American, I am free, living, soulful man, and I'm in the process of obtaining my state national status. So with that being said, I do want to recognize the following people that are zooming in from the media. We've got Face Us, which is a podcast with Lulu Fleming, Megan Fox and Mike Volpe, National, Alex Falcone with Our Nevada Judges, News Talk Radio with Monica J, Sam Toll with The Storyteller, Bill Denzer with The Review Journal, KRNV News Channel 4 with Kim Burroughs, and the national media, The Epoch Times. I further want to recognize any national tribal nations especially the Cherokee Nation, because my heritage, because of my heritage. They're in Oklahoma and they are part of the Texas Republic. I also want to recognize the Republic of Oregon, people that are zooming in from the Republic of California, the Republic of Arizona and all nation states, especially the East Coast, where the daughters of the American Revolution, as my heritage is a descendant of the Mayflower. The following are my advisors and counselors and witnesses. They are lawful, spiritual, emotional, medical, and religious witnesses. They are an assembly that they be allowed to speak as the lawful authority. Number one, Mr. and Mrs. Strait of the Texas Republic as advisors and lawful counselors. Mrs. Janice Walk of the DC area as a medical advisor and ADA representative. Mrs. Linda Deemer and Cindy Coe of the UCLA Los Angeles area as spiritual advisors. Mr. Martin Lynch of Arizona as a constitutional advisor and Mrs. Kathleen Abair of the Exposer, an investigative journalist, which she lives near Nashville, Tennessee, one of the, the only chancery court in the United States. Mr. Hilgus, pause right there, please. And there is also- Mr. Hilgus, I need you to pause just for a moment. I wanna say something.
For those that don't know me, it should be difficult in Nevada. My name is Judge Cheryl Moss. I served in Family Court, Department I, and from For the record, I don't say these things to hear myself talk. An absolute decree of divorce is granted. By September 6, you will pay $6,000 of what is due. In the dependency arena, you really do boil down what the best interest of the child actually means. You could have a party argument. And I said, you know, Grandma, I'm going to be a legal secretary just like you. And she looked at me straight in the eye and said, no, you're going to be a lawyer. One of the issues that the court system has is uh, There are two different statutes under Nevada law, NRS 22, NRS 199. They give the court the authority to oversee the orderly presentation of matters that are pending. They give the court authority to find someone in contempt if they are interfering intentionally with the orderly progression of a case. That includes disobeying court directive. That involves taking positions that disrupt the proceedings. That involves, for example, the trying to take control of a hearing when the hearing is set for certain uh, matters. You are dangerously close to being held in contempt by the court, either civilly under chapter 22 or criminally under NRS 199. I do not want to find you in contempt. I want you to be heard with respect to the merits of this case. And if you think there's legal authority, why this court is not the right case, uh, the right court to preside, you can file a motion, I'll consider it. However, your own views that you've expressed on the issues you've touched on over the last 10 to 15 minutes are not what we're here about. This is not the time, this is not the place. We're here to talk about how this case moves forward. We're here to talk about whether Mr. Bataro stays on as counsel for Mr. Hanty. We're here to talk about whether Mr. Hanty's bail should be lowered or at least what process we're gonna to use to do that. We're here to talk about whether Mr. Hanty is unwell. We're here to talk about the pending motions the court has and needs to consider and decide. So I, I wanna caution you, this is, this is a, a warning to you that hey. you are getting close to dis disorderly conduct. Your views, this is not the time, the place or the venue for that. This is I object, I object to your statutory codes and policies. Those are corporate bylaws. You are operating under a private for-profit corporation. Under Title V, USC 556D and 557 and 706, when a court fails to provide due process of law, it forfeits any jurisdiction and any rules and any rulings are null and void. I object to your statutory codes as not being law under a Title III court. 
I am requiring a Title III court. I am requiring that you provide your oath. Mr. Hilgis, um, Mr. Hilgis, I need you. To, uh, Mr. Hilgis, please stop. You're repeating yourself now. And I, I'm trying, I'm trying to help you stay out of trouble here. I, I do not want to hold you in contempt. I do not want you to be fined. I do not want to put you in jail for being disorderly in my courtroom. Right? I, I want you to stay focused I'm on what glad that I object to you proceeding without a Title III court. I am not doing anything other than at this status hearing expressing my status and standing with respect to I am not to be considered a citizen, a person, or a resident. I therefore am a natural man. I'm living man. I'm not a vessel. I am not the all caps name that you are trying to put me under your corporate bylaws for this private for-profit corporation that you are receiving a corporate paycheck. Um, I am here to settle this case. Well, Mr. Hilligus, Mr. Hilligus, no Mr. Hilligus, Mr. Hilligus. This is the last time the court's gonna warn you. We're not here to talk about that. Indeed, the court has discretion under Nevada Revised Statute 178 to hit the pause button on this case and direct you to an evaluation to make sure you're in a position to move this case Objection. forward. Objection, statutes and codes are not law. There's quite a bit of case law with respect to that. I object to you proceeding not following my requirement for an Article Three court. Um, I am a natural living man on the land. I am here under peace. I got a peaceful flag. I've got a Bible. I am under divine special appearance and I'm calling for a court of record. There is no probable cause. And I am wherefore I am here to settle a claim with the injured party. All right, Mr. Iligas, I need you to stop. Because this court this is, is operating under the doctrine of parents patre. Mr. I am not, the court is not my parent. I am proceeding with a Title III, Article III court. All right. Thank you. Please, please stop right there. Objection. You are violating my First Amendment right, my freedom to speak, and my freedom to redress grievances. When you fail to provide me due process, you are in violation of Title V USC 556D. When a court fails to provide due process of law, it forfeits any jurisdiction. I am asking that you provide me with my First Amendment right, my freedom to speak, and my freedom to redress grievances. I want to continue addressing the- Mr. Hillegas, I need you to stop talking now. Mr. Mr. Hillegas. Mr. Elias, I'm giving you a court order. Stop talking. You are violating no. my First Amendment right to speak. Mr. Hillegas, you're, you're, now, you're, you're now in contempt of court, Mr. Hillegas. And are we going to have a contempt hearing? And do I have Mr. the right to remain silent at that contempt hearing? Mr. Are you going to find me in criminal contempt or constructive contempt? What type of contempt are you going to find me? Because you've lost jurisdiction because you are violating my due process rights to speak. And I want to finish speaking. You've allowed everybody else to speak, but you're now denying me my opportunity to provide my status and standing to this court. And once I provide you the status and standing, I'm gonna require you to open up an article three court and proceed under the common law because I am not a resident, I am not a citizen and I'm not a person. Mr. Elegas. Listen carefully. Under Nevada Revised Statute 178. Objection, objection. Point. Statutes and codes are not law. Mr. I, am not, I am not one of your slaves. I am, not one of the, I am not one of your citizens, residents, or persons. I'm gonna say this one more time. Okay, I Mr. Do Gaynor, not fall I want you to mute Mr. Hilligus, please. Thank you. All right, under NRS 178.405, subsection one, the statute reads as follows, anytime after the arrest of a defendant, including without limitation, proceedings before trial, 
if doubt arises as to the competence of a defendant, the court shall suspend the proceedings, the trial or the pronouncing of judgment as the case may be until the question of competence is determined based on the actions of Mr. Hillegas today and throughout this court proceeding since it was bound over to district court. The court has serious concerns about the competency of Mr. Hillegas to move forward in this case, including but not limited to as counsel for, uh, representing himself. This court, this case is stayed. Mr. Hillegas, you are ordered within three weeks of today to have a psychological evaluation conducted by two separate evaluators pursuant to statute. Determine if you are competent to go forward in this matter. The results will be filed under seal. The court will set a competency hearing and we will determine if you are in a position to go forward. If not, the court will make orders consistent with the law when somebody is found incompetent. If the evaluators disagree as to your competence, the court will likely appoint a third or direct you to a third to be evaluated. And then the court will make a decision. But these proceedings are stayed because the court has serious concerns about Mr. Hillegas' competence. Now, I'm trying to remember under the statute, is Mr. Hillegas uh, supposed to find someone or does the court direct him um, to uh, a, a private evaluator? Because Lakes Crossing recently indicated they will not be entertaining further um, uh, evaluations from people that are out of custody. Mr. Stegey, do you know the status of that, please, at this time? I don't know the status of the, uh, what the court's referring to is, I believe, uh, Lakes Crossing operated a contract with uh, the courts to conduct uh, competency proceedings that the court has just uh, addressed under uh, Chapter 178. I believe uh, that the status of that contract is, has changed. However, I don't, that does not affect what the court should do, which says that under 178415, that the court shall appoint, um, as the case may do, may be two psychiatrists, two psychologists. Yes, or, or thank you. Together. So Mr. Hillegas is not to find his way to two. I will appoint you. I will prepare a separate written order, which will be filed either later today or more likely tomorrow that addresses what will go forward um, from this point forward. But I want Mr. Hillegas evaluated because I have serious concerns about his competency at this point. Mr. Bataro, any, any comments uh, based on that? And question being, uh, can we proceed um, further with uh, whether you want to change the bail status of, of Mr. Uh, Hanty? Uh, I, I obviously, the, to me, the prime important is uh, set, uh, address the court so that we can set conditions to get him released from custody. That, that's my prime concern. I, let me just, it, with Mr. Hilligus, what we just went through, Your Honor, uh, I, I obviously, I don't know if I want to continue to have to listen to that, but nevertheless, um, I know you've stated, uh, I, I may have, have filed a motion based upon that to sever. A, a formal severance versus the court uh, stays is what I'm saying. Well, I, the stay is as to Mr. Hillegas. These cases are together. I, I'm not sure as a matter of law, if the court can proceed with, for example, a bail hearing with respect to Mr. Hanty, if you're gonna to seek to lower the bail. And from there, a Ferretti hearing, if we get to that point, I, I have to look at that. I wasn't expecting this type of an approach by Mr. Hillegas <laughs> and these concerns to be raised uh, under the circumstances. But um, I don't know, Mr. Stegey, what do you think? I mean, is the court allowed? I just interject one last thing, Judge. Go ahead. Uh, I, I mean, I, 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 I believe, of course, because it is a... I do not want you to breach your fiduciary duty because you have a fiduciary duty and you're, you're, you're in dereliction of your duty, sir. You are operating a public charitable trust and it's your Mr. duty to protect that trust. Mr. Hillegas, Mr. Hillegas. I am placing stop. on the record, I'd like to make a record right now. I'm placing on the record... All right. So what we're going to do, gentlemen, is a, a court order... A court order... A court order is going to issue tomorrow. 
Yeah. And this matter is stayed as to Mr. Hillegas, uh, pending his two psychological evaluations that the court has now ordered. Um, Mr. Pitaro, uh, talk to Mr. Stakey about whether you believe uh, you can move forward on Mr. Hanty's case and if what, in what so, what capacity. Uh, but pending Mr. Hillegas' determination, his case is stayed. Mr. Pitaro, any I mean, final thoughts? Yes, my, my, my thought is, is that as far as the custodial status of uh, Mr. Hanty is something that would have to be addressed because uh, the court has to address it uh, because it, it affects his ability to be in, in or out. That would be independent of anything else that, that would happen. I think the court would always uh, would retain that jurisdiction. As far as the other matters, I think uh, I think the court may be right that stay one, stay all uh, until a formal severance would be. Well, but, not, but, but, but I agree with you. His custody status is in play. <laughs> I can't see why it would not be. Okay. So if, if there's a motion to be filed, yeah, get it filed promptly so I can have the state respond promptly and the court can either uh, rule on it or it can set a hearing so that Mr. Hanty's custody status um, and, and health status, if that's an issue, can be addressed. Yeah, did, right? and, yeah along that line, I, 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 I would I would ask the court for some time. This is, Friday I'm leaving. I have to go to Colorado with my wife for her first sisters and home hospice so we're going to be there on that we'll be back i'll be back monday uh i i, I will get something filed before i leave obviously but uh tuesday uh, if we can have a hearing then i don't i don't think the uh, the facts are basically the same saving except what are you going to do because he didn't show up uh for the bracelet uh the third thing is then wednesday i go in for a medical procedure um that and then after <laughs> what happens to that, uh, there's, there's a, 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 a murder trial, an attempt murder trial, and then I set for the 14th. So my schedule is basically as is, is chaotic as any any as, uh, could be. So Tuesday, if we could uh, try to do something Tuesday, Judge. Um, uh, I, uh, Amos, I, I know him. Amos is ready to go right now. Um, I, I will file a motion and ask. It's going to be very simple. Um, well, I'll make it, I'll, I'll set a hearing uh, or make a decision as quickly as I can. Once it's submitted, Mr. Batara, once you file a motion, Mr. Stegi responds, you can either submit it based on the response, I'll review it and either set it for a hearing or decide, or you can reply and then file a request for submission. I'll set it for a hearing or I'll make a decision. But I, I want to give you an opportunity to move for a change in Mr. Hanty's custody oh. status as you believe is appropriate and the state an opportunity to respond and express their views of it. Now, I know Mr. Hanty wanted to say something. I'm reluctant to give him the floor um, under the circumstances, uh, but um, because you know, right now I, I, I wanted to go through you, right? I wanted to go through you, not say anything that might work to his disadvantage for custody status, for whether he wants to represent himself or for anything else on this case. So Mr. Hanty, unless it's a procedural question, um, I, I'm going to end this hearing and have you talk to Mr. Pitaro. Um, you, you know what he, I, let me, in my comment, he wants to address what's happening is, is his medical and physical status <laughs> while, while in custody. Apparently what happened after uh, he was arrested, <coughs> he had uh, certain problems with his blood pressure went sky high, uh, medication went that, he blacked out. Uh, they took him to one of the facilities, uh, gave him some medication. He tells me he's having adverse uh, 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 on on some, some of the medication. He's blacked out again, uh, and they put him in. But he has not seen a doctor, uh, uh, an actual doctor. Uh, my understanding is he has seen maybe maybe the nurses within the jail. I assume they have the nurses who who do that, and so they've got him sitting in the psychiatric ward right now. Uh, I would I would ask that the court at least uh, during this interim ask that uh, if the jail could have him evaluated by their in-house doctor because I, I I that's I you know when you said that's all I know that I I'm in the same boat you are I really don't know much more than what he told me about the medication the blacking out uh, the falling and now ending up uh, uh, in a wheelchair so I just think that the medical condition is of prime importance judge. And I, I know Washoe, like Clark, has a, uh, doctors on contract that, that uh, could do it. And I'm asking the court at least make the request of uh, 
of the jail facility that, that, that he be evaluated for that so that we all have that uh, uh, information in front of us. <laughs> I, I mean, hey, I, you, hey, you ran for election, not us. <laughs> well, you know, medical concerns, of course, become come before everything else. Um, and I don't want Mr. Handy to be physically suffering or in danger or his health compromised um, for, for any reason, much less for this case. On the other hand, that's, that's tantamount to the court superimposing its view just based on this limited in, interaction on how they do things up there. He, he is you know, um, quite obviously not the first person to present with medical issues or concerns. And I, at this point, I'm gonna trust them to do what they believe is fit. On the other hand, if you believe the, the jail is being deficient, is compromising his health, safety, or welfare in some way, please file something and, so, and with some authority that gives me the right to direct them to do something different than what they're doing now. But I, on the fly, I'm just not comfortable doing that. Well, that I, was go, I, was, I was asking the court to make the, the inquiry, which it, down here, when these things come up, I ask, uh, many times the, the chambers will call and ask the person to be there, not, not going through the formal court order where we get into competing jurisdictions. Then generally, it, it, it's complied with is what I'm saying. It's a uh, bureaucracy. I'm not. I'm not even going to make. I'm not doing that either at this point. That's. I've never done that. Um, I again, I leave it to the jail to uh, care for the people in its charge as the law requires and as common sense and and good uh, human interactions will allow. Um, so I, you have it on, it's on my radar, Mr. Pataro. I'm not prepared to move on it at this time. All right, so here's where we leave this hearing. Um, Mr. The case has stayed on Mr. Hillegas's case pending the evaluations order to follow. With respect to uh, custody status, I agree that that needs to be decided before an informed decision on a Ferretta hearing if we're even gonna go forward. The other motions on the Panty matter remain pending. They're now stayed on Hillegas. I'll set a follow-up hearing. Uh, as soon as I check my calendar, I'll send out a, a notice. We'll do another Zoom hearing to see where things stand. Um, and an order will issue tomorrow with respect to Mr. Hillegas. All right, Mr. Stegey, before we end the hearing, anything else you'd like to put on the record? Uh, only to uh, urge upon the court the view that the question of uh, Mr. Hanty's lawyer is completely distinct in the law uh, from his custody status. The decision... Uh, to represent himself, if that's what he chooses, stands apart from whether he, um, I don't know what he's doing right now, um, stands apart from um, custody. So um, I think it would be a mistake. I mean, there are many defendants over the past uh, ages that have represented themselves both in and out of custody. So, But it's certainly a factor the court can take into account in deciding whether um, the his request is, is one that the court uh, believes is, um, should be granted. So, um, but yes, it's, it's, not, it's not definitive, it's informative is the way I would put it. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, the court will be in recess. Uh, I, wish I demand an accounting, very nice I demand an accounting. All right, bye for now. Thank you. Thank you, Ronna.